Okay, so now we're going to look at table lookups and table lookups are really useful in a relational database. So here is our driving school database and here we're looking at the relationships and if you remember we set up a table to um, book all the students lessons in and in that table we have a one-to-many relationship on the student ID field. So let's have a look at that table. So in this table I've got all the lesson numbers, Those are uh, that's the primary key, then the student's ID and the instructor's ID. So if I was going to add a new lesson, I would have to type in the student's ID, which means I'll have to remember it and that's really difficult because we've got lots of students. So we want to have a drop down from another table to show all the possible students that we could put in there. And we want to be able to pull that information in from the student table. So we want to be able to see these students' names, their IDs, so we can just click on the student that we want. So if you notice on this student ID table, the first one, two, three, four columns are quite useful to us. Those would probably be the columns that we want to see if we had a drop down. Ideally, we probably would only want to see the surname and first name. So that's column three and four. We'll need that in a minute. I'm just going to close the student table and I'm going to go into the design view of my lesson table. So this is the field where I want to have a look up. Now because we've already got a relationship set up, if I try and do a lookup wizard, it won't let me because it's already part of a relationship. So I'm going to show you another way of doing this. So I'm in the student ID field and I'm going down to the field properties area and I'm going to the lookup tab. So now I'm going to change the way that this control is displayed in the, in the table by selecting combo box. Then I'm going to see that the source um, for my uh, information is going to be a table or a query. In this case it's going to be a table so we leave it as table query. In the third row it says what is the source of our information. We click in that row, go to the end and use the drop down. We can see all the queries and tables in our database. And the source for this information is table student. So I'm going to select that. Okay, so now we've got combo box, table query, table students. When it comes to bound column, this is the column where the data will be imported into. So our bound column is column one. If you remember looking at the student table, column one has got the student ID number. We want to leave it as column one. We do though want to be able to see some of the other data in the other columns um, and I'll show you how this works in a minute. So let's first of all save it as it is and we'll make the other changes in a moment. If I go back to data sheet view and go to add a new record. Now I can select the student's number. So that's the next step. So that's good. So we can see all the students numbers and we can select one of those. But I can't remember who is each of these students. I can't remember whose name this is. So I want in this list to have all the students' names as well. So I'm going to go back into Design View. So I'm going to leave my bound column as column one because that's the student ID. But I'm going to ask it to show me other columns. And I'm going to have the first four columns shown. So I've got the number four in there now. So let's have a look at uh, what it looks like. So I'm going to go back into Datasheet View, do a new record, and this time now I can start to see the, uh, the students' names. It's a bit hard to see, so I might have to adjust that, but now I can start to select people. So I'm going to go back to Datasheet, sorry, to Design View again, and now I'm going to make a few more adjustments in the Lookup tab. So we've got the bound column, we know that stays as one because I want the student's ID to be 
uh, the data is actually shown in there eventually. We've got the first four columns being shown, which is excellent. And now I'm just going to adjust the width of the column so when the list comes down, I can see all the names in full. So, um, I want to see the student's ID number, so I've got one centimetre for that field. And I'm going to separate these with a semicolon. Um, I don't particularly want to see um, the title, Mr. and Mrs. Miss, so I'm going to put a zero in there for the second column. Semicolon. Now we come to the surname, which is column number three, and I think probably three centimetres would be enough to show that uh, surname, semicolon again, and for the first name another three centimetres perhaps. So then um, I'm going to move down to list width which at the moment is set to auto but I want it to be um, a bit wider, I want it to sort of work out the, the list width myself. So here I can see that I've got three columns being shown, three centimetres, three centimetres and one centimetre. So three plus three plus one is seven. So I want my list actually to be seven centimetres wide. The final thing that I need to change um, on this lookup uh, property is to make sure that whoever's putting in the students names can only select names from that list. So it's really important to limit to the list so they can't type in their own values. Let's see what happens now when I've saved it. Back in the data sheet view. So another new blank record. So now hopefully, there we go, I can see the surname, first name and the student ID number and I can select them. Because I've found that first column, it will still put in the student's ID number, which is exactly how I wanted that, um, that column to run. So back into design view, so you can have another look at how to set up um, a table lookup. So we're selecting combo box, we make sure that we're selecting it from the correct table. We work out how many columns we want to actually see. We leave the bound column as one because that's going to be bound to this foreign key which is the student ID number. And then we want to see which columns we want to display in our list. Work out sort of the, the rough width for those. And then you work out the full list width by adding up your column width. And most important, we want to limit to that list. We don't want to type in our own values, so we say yes to limit list.